Hello everyone. Once again, this is Dr. Watterson giving you a quick screencast lesson on using Gradebook in D2L. And this time we're going to be looking at how to find some progress indicators for your students, uh, whether they're doing uh, results of assessments or you're wanting just an overall look at how well students are doing in the class. Uh, without having to go through them one by one. So here I have a course open. This is a course from a few years ago. And so any changes that I make here in the course uh, are not going to be impacting uh, what's going on currently. One of the things that you can do is simply go to this orange toolbar and you have the communication link. And if you do the drop down here, come down to class progress and click on that and you'll see all the people in the class and you get these really nice tools uh, whether they have visited content whether they are making progress on your course objectives this is a quick gradebook look and as you scroll back and forth here each bar represents a gradebook item and how the students did uh, logins here uh, because this is not a current course, their login history has been uh, deleted, so they're not trying to log into this anymore. So don't worry about that. But in a current semester course, you would be able to see how many times the students have logged in. In this page, though, overall class, project, uh, class progress, you have a couple of really important pieces of information. In this one, the content. Assuming that you have a decent amount of content, in your course, the type of thing that students could look at, whether it's PowerPoints or PDFs or links and whatnot, you can quickly scan through here and get an idea of how well students are keeping up with the work that you are putting there, things that you expect them to look at or click on or do something with. For example, in this class, I've got a few people that are doing pretty well. Uh, and then I had a few people who weren't doing very well in looking at the course content. For the most part, the course content in this class is uh, slides that I show in class, other handouts that I give in class, and so having them posted here in D2L is just an additional way the students can access the content. So you're going to need to decide whether a low percentage of accessing the content is indicative of low engagement in the class. Similarly, if simply clicking on all the items indicates high engagement in the class, you'll need to make a judgment there. On the objectives, this one is much more important. The idea here is that you have course objectives in the course, and the course objectives are connected to assignments. And an assignment could be anything from a paper that was turned into D2L, a grade on a test, participating in a blog. Uh, anything could be uh, utilized as an assignment or a gradebook item. But connecting those gradebook items to your course objectives will show up here. In this class, I have three objectives. And so this student, for instance, has completed two out of the three, three out of the three. Actually, this one says three out of the three, but something isn't quite showing up right. I know that this is an aspect of D2L that does not function perfectly. So you'll need to investigate. However, um, it still gives us some information. So I'm going to click here on this student where I get a red bar to indicate no completion and yet we have the word completed three out of three so let's just click on that and see what's going on. Aha! So now we see that the red bar and the word completed this isn't uh, the words don't quite match the bar. What's going on here is that the student did not complete what are the course objectives. I have three objectives in this class. The three objectives are keyed to certain gradebook items and 
it's hard to know exactly what's going on. So on the one hand, we have the red bar, which would indicate not good. But then we have the words here that seem to indicate completed. Well, we would have to investigate a little bit more. So here's one way of doing that. I can just click on any of these course objective statements and go right to it. Similarly, I can click on the activity, the actual assignment in the class, and go right to that. I'm going to do the first thing here. I'm going to click on the course objective. It's going to show me that in this class, this was the assignment that I was looking at. And similarly, I can click on that, and it gives me the detail, but it doesn't give me the gradebook information. So I would like to look at that gradebook information. I'll do that in just a moment. Staying on this screen for this student, you see on the left-hand side here, there's a list of items that you can look on. You can look at, for that student, the overall summary of their progress. You can see that the student did not visit very much of my content, uh, doesn't have a lot of success here in papers that have been turned in, and doesn't have a lot of success here either. Now, one thing we're going to look at here is the student in a spring semester course, the last time they looked at it was a full month before the end of the semester. It just might be that this student withdrew at that point. I don't remember off the top of my head, but it's possible. But each of these items here, you can click on and see some overall progress. In summary form, what has that student been doing? So in my content, here's the student looked at the syllabus. Well, supposedly never looked at my slides. Looked at some assignment information, but doesn't have a whole lot going on. All right, I'm going to go back to where I started. I was in the communication tab. I was in the class progress zone. And I have this overall summary. This course objectives section right here should be just a very uh, simple and useful indicator of how well students are doing. Now, each objective in my course will not show completed until the very end. And this is something that uh, I just, that's how I structured my class. You may have structures such that certain objectives get completed earlier, certain objectives get completed later. And so you'll have to understand what this is showing you. Another set of feedback on class progress is to look at the course objectives themselves and to have a different view of overall progress. So this time again in the orange bar, I'm going to come over here to Assessments, and I'm going to drop down and go to Competencies. The Competency Home is where the course objectives are housed for the course. So here in my course, I'm going to expand this. We see the three course objectives, and I can go to them one at a time, and I have these two menu items. I have Structure and I have results. For right now, I'm just going to click on results. So for that objective, I now see my class list, and I have this really simple icon over here. A green check mark means that student accomplished that objective, and the X means that student did not accomplish that objective. Just a real simple scan for overall progress. I'm going to come back here in my breadcrumb trail. I'm not going to use the back button on the browser window. I'm just going to go backwards of where I was. I'm going to go to the learning objective. And now I'm going to click on the structure. And this will drop down to say, here's the objective. This is the assignment that goes to it. And I have these options over here on the right where I can get some more info. I can click on this View Results, and I should have the exact same screen I had a moment ago, this time as a pop-up window. And as you see, it's the same window, all the same people, all the same results.
There's always a couple of different ways of getting to where you want to go. We're going to come back to the competency home in the breadcrumb trail. Expand out my list again. This time I'm going to click on the competency set itself. It's the blue triangle with the name of my class abbreviated. And I'm going to click on the results button. Now I'm going to see overall results for all my objectives. So here's an interesting view. It says something has not been completed. I'm going to back up and back up again. I'm going to drop down. My suspicion is it has something to do here in course objective number three. Nope. Everything's fine there. Here again is an issue of the system not working perfectly. In this objective, I have all my completion data right there. However, sometimes D2L uh, doesn't quite add 2 and 2 and equal 5 like the rest of us know it should. So again, I'm going to come back to my competency home. This time I'm going to click on the entire set. I'm going to click on structure. And now I see all my course objectives, one, two, and three. I see the gradebook category that goes to each one. And I have my little ruler indicators out here to say, show me progress. I'm going to click on these one at a time. Right here, the progress bar for that assignment set. I see completions. I'm going to go to the next one. I see completions. Closing it out, going down to the third one. There, I see completions. So just in an overall view, I'm able to see my course objectives. I see a summary of which students did, which students did not complete it. And I find that pretty helpful for understanding what's going on. Coming back to my competency home, coming back to my gradebook, Another piece of feedback I can show you in the gradebook. For any given item in my gradebook, I can also see some feedbacks. I'm just going to go to test number one here, the drop down arrow. You have this item called View Statistics. If you click on that, you're going to get some data on that particular gradebook item. In this case, it was the very first test I gave that semester. And I have some feedback. So, for instance, the lowest grade in the class was a 42%. The highest grade was an 80. The average grade was a 68.4. So this was not the most successful indicator of student learning, but it was the first test in a course. You can come down and you can see the breakdown of all the scores, how many people got what kind of a score, some other graphical data. You can look at individual users by clicking on the user statistics tab and now I see the list of people in the course and I see their grade. Just a different way of looking at the gradebook, quickly scanning. You might look through here and you pick out, oh, the people that might need some additional assistance. And this would be a really great use of this kind of feedback. I just gave a test. It's still early in the year. Uh, this one may have occurred only within the first few weeks of a semester. And I can look through and I can see, hmm, something didn't go very well for a large number of these students. And then I might start thinking, well, what's the content of the course? What is the method of delivering the content? Do I use lecture? Do I use discussion? Do I use uh, group work? Am I doing experiential learning? You might start thinking, early in this case, early in the term to figure out, do I need to make an adjustment such that students will be more successful? And I say that not just to uh, get at the idea of getting students to have higher grades, but if these grades indicate the students are not learning very well, we should intervene as early as we possibly can. All right, so that's just uh, another quick video on doing some magic in the gradebook. Look for another video in the future.